We're gonna implement the chat functionality in our Facebook Messenger clone. So chat's probably one of the cooler features and one of the main reasons you'd wanna build a Facebook chat application. And we're gonna build that in this video. So the way it's gonna work is we're going to extend our backend. We're gonna create another microservice, similar to how we made the online presence microservice. We're going to have the chat microservice, the hybrid microservice. And that will allow us to make a WebSocket connection from the back end to the React Native front end using Socket IO. So it's going to make use of the Redis caching to determine if the user or if the friend that we want to talk to is online or not. If they are online, we can send them a message and we can emit that message to the user. If they're not, well, we can um, later create a push notification system or something like that to be able to handle that. So we're gonna make use of the auth and the Redis um, microservices and also the online presence microservices to create our online chat application. So if that sounds exciting, please check out this video. So let's start off with a demo of what we're going to build today. So on the left-hand side on the Android emulator, I'm logged in as John Pepink. And we have Larry Smith as a friend, which is logged in on the iPhone emulator. And we've also got a friend, a, a second friend uh, from John Pepink, which is also named John Pepink, confusingly enough. Um, just reusing the same API request, basically. But if I click on Larry Smith, and you can see that, you know, there's the green circle to indicate that they're online. Um, and then I click on John Pepink here. Um, if I type something in, so let me just type in, hello, Larry. And I send a message. We can see that that message appears on Larry's phone as well as uh, John's phone or my phone um, and I can just say hi John back and that's using WebSockets, Socket IO. so we're going to set all of that up and these are in individual rooms as you would probably expect so if I click back on the emulator and then I go to a user that's not online for example and I say hi um, you see that we don't get any strange behavior. So let's start coding this up. So we create a new um, chat module. So in our apps folder here, we'll see that we've got this chat module uh, and you can just run the nest CLI command to uh, generate an app to quickly generate that. So I might start off with just one of the changes I've made. So in the two videos ago, um, I set up Redis and I set up Redis in memory caching. Um, I was initially going to use Redis caching alongside Redis as a database, um, which is why I just used the regular cache uh, in the previous video. Um, but I've decided to um, circle back and actually use the Redis cache. So it's pretty simple. Um, it's just a matter of making the actual change. And the reason for that is, um, you know, we already have all of our user information in the Postgres database. We can use the Redis cache to quickly access um, and determine whether a user is active or not. Uh, and then depending on that, um, we can send messages um, and have a WebSocket connection, um, which we send to if they're online. Otherwise, we'll just store it in the database. Um, so we will just go ahead and in this Redis module here in our shared library, um, we've already set this up, but just as a reminder, um, we use the cache module to register a sync and then we await, await the Redis store based on the Redis URI, which we have from the environment variables. And then we set is global to true. And another reason we're doing it in here, because previously I think we did in the presence module, um, 
we're having in the shared module because we want to access the Redis um, key value stores from the cache in both modules, both in presence and chat. Um, so that's why we delegate there and we have a server for that as well. Um, so that's the Redis module. And just a reminder, we just have the basic get, set, delete, uh, and reset uh, functionalities, although we wouldn't have reset in production. That's just for us to clear our Redis cache. Um, one tiny tweak I made here is I just had the set um, and I have this optional parameter here of TTL. Time to leave is zero, which uh, represents infinity. Um, so even though the user will go online and offline, um, we still want to be able to track if they're um, offline. So when they first log in, or before they log in, it, this will be undefined because um, the user, you know, they haven't logged in. But when they log in, um, you know, that particular user's ID will correspond with whether or not, um, you know, they're active or not. And then when they log off, the activity um, flag goes to off um, and that will propagate to or be emitted to the uh, friends. So just a small tweak there. Um, so you can see in the presence module here, um, we just go ahead and add that Redis module in there. Um, and we also add it into the chat module as well. Um, but I might come back to that because we're gonna add some other things into the chat module itself. So in our share library, we also just want to make some entities. Um, so let's just create an entity for the conversation. So we'll call that the conversation entity, which has a primary generated column, an ID, which is a number. Um, and then it has a many to many relationship with the, the user table. Um, that's because many conversations can belong to many users. Uh, or another way to think about it is there are many users using our application. So there's many users and each of those users, each of those many users um, can have many conversations. So there's a many to many relationship there. And we just add this join table so we can um, access those users from the conversation. Um, so, oh, and one other thing to note is um, we're setting this up for a one-to-one -one sort of chatting, but it's sort of scalable if you want to have more people in the room because um, it's just a matter of adding more people into the user's array. And you'll see later that you can just use WebSockets to loop through all of those users and send a message. So uh, group messages will be quite easy, um, although we're focusing on the one-to-one -one messaging. And then we have a one-to-many relation with the messages. So each conversation, every one conversation has many messages associated with it. So we just have this relation here. And we also have this uh, final um, updated update co date column. Now this will just happen automatically. You don't have to actually um, fill this in. And this is just airing because we haven't created our message entity and we'll come back to the user entity in just a sec. Um, so just to look at this here, the message entity, we have the message entity class, which also has a primary generated column. It has a message, which is the string, and then it has this many to one relation. Um, so many messages can belong to one user. Um, and we'll tweak that in just a sec. And then we've also got this many to one relationship um, as we saw um, to the conversation entity. So when you have a one to many, the inverse of that is the many to one. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. And then we also have this created date column um, because we may want to access that. Um, so then we can come to the user entity and we can just add that many to many relation. So we had a many to many here between the conversation and the user entity. So we just use the many to many here in that spot as well. So the 
user entity is aware of the many relations to the conversation. So they'll be able to create a third table um, to have those um, foreign keys from both to create that table so that you can join them uh, and get all the information you need. But type ORM handles that for us anyway. Um, and then we have that one to many with the message entity. So we see this many to one um, with the use entity and the inverse of that is the one to many. So we just take the message entity, the user, um, and then we have the array of messages there. So what I do next is, of course we're using the abstract repository design pattern. Um, you know, we've got the type ORM operations. Um, I did just want to add one extra one here. So instead of the find and all that sort of stuff, um, I'm having this fine conversation. Um, probably you could just use the basic type ORM operations, but I was finding it a little hard to write the query. So um, we extend the conversation entity, which has all of those generic ones. And then I just added this fine conversation one here because I use the um, class builder thing, um, which you'll see in a sec. Messages repository, that's just similar to how they were before. Uh, that interface there. Uh, and then we're looking at the conversations repository. Um, so this is the actual implementation of it. So you can see we've got this fine conversation. And the way we're finding a conversation is we're finding it based on a user ID and also the friend ID. Um, so what I do, and you can see why I've done it like this, um, I added this to the interface is because I got this um, create query builder, which was a little tricky um and yeah i mean i just it was taking too long to figure out with the standard method so i just use this here um so we can use the create query builder um type orms you know more you know robust um query builder so for the conversation table um that's what we call it we're referencing the conversation entity, which represents the table, and we're just giving it an alias of the name conversation. And then we're performing a join with the users table. Um, so on the conversation table that we're on, we're, um, for the user's key, um, we join it to the user, and type ORM can, is aware of that relationship and can do that. Um, and that way we can access some of the properties on the other table, so the user table here. We can get the user ID. Um, <clears throat> now this can be whatever you um, put in here. Um, and that's just to avoid any, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, SQL injection, um, which type of ORM pretty much, you don't really, um, when you're using ORMs and become dependent on ORMs, you don't really think about that. But when you first start learning about SQL and all that sort of stuff. It's something you want to avoid, but since we're, you know, sort of creating a pseudo raw query with the query builder, uh, we just need this extra uh, precaution here. Um, so basically the users is an array of users, um, which are the user entities. So you can either be the, you know, we, we could either be the creator or the receiver, which is how I've set it up in the uh, friend request methods. So if you want a full tutorial on friend request management, check out the LinkedIn clone. Um, but essentially we can just look at the users and if one of the users um, is the user ID or the friend ID, um, you know, we want to grab those because we want to get that conversation. Um, so we can group by the conversation ID. Um, that just sort of probably is going to happen by default anyway. Um, having a count greater than one um, because we want more than one person in the conversation. Now that should be happening anyway. Um, and then we just want to get one. So yeah, essentially 
we're passing in the user ID and the friend ID. And if the user ID is equal to the user ID we pass in or the friend ID that we pass in, um, that means, you know, we have our conversation and we have this join on the user as well. Um, so we can get the records from both. Um, yeah, so hopefully that was straightforward. Well, it's a little tricky, but if you need more detail, again, check out the LinkedIn clone series. I go into a lot of detail about that. Um, so the messages repository, um, you know, this is just having a repository. Um, now the auth controller, we want a, be able to use RabbitMQ to access this microservice. And we're going to use the get user command here. Um, so we can get the user by ID. So we can just pass in this payload here where the user has an ID in the object. Um, and then we can just call this auth service get user by ID method here. So that's really basic. It's just using the type ORM uh, find by ID method. And then something more interesting perhaps is this get friends here because when we um, log in to our application, we're sort of assuming that we have all the friends there. Um, so we need to get all of our friends. Um, and then for our friends, we need to create conversations um, if they don't already exist. Um, so we just have that get friends there. Um, and I've also got this get friends list method here. Um, so we're going to create this as well, but essentially there's getting the friends and then there's getting the friends list. Cause recall, we got the friends requests, which have both your user and the friend. We just want to simplify that and, um, you know, just give back the friends in our friends list. Um, so you can see here, we got this get friends method here um, in the auth service. So we may have done this in the previous video, actually, uh, just getting the friends with the relations where the creator is the creator or the receiver is the creator. Um, so we've already went through that. And then we can extend on that to get the friends list. So we can actually use the get friends method for the user's ID to get all of the friend requests. Um, if there are none, then you just return an empty array and then you can map through those friend requests. Um, and we want to return those friends. Um, but in our map here, if the user is the creator, basically the user ID or the person making the request, that will be equal to the creator ID. And if um, they are the user, if the user is the creator, um, you know, we want to give back the opposite. So the friend request receiver. So we've seen this before. We've sort of used this bit of code a few times already, um, which is an indication to refactor it higher. Um, but you know, and then const ID, first name, last name, email. It's also, um, you know, possible to set up the tables a little different, but again, we're not focusing on the friend request stuff. The LinkedIn clone is for that, um, which is why I don't mind just having a little bit of duplication um, to avoid needing to set up all of the different friend request stuff. Um, but again, I'll leave that uh, as an exercise to the viewer. So we just destructure the friends details, get the details there and then just return them there. Um, and then in the auth module, um, we just need to add in the conversation entity and message entity. Um, even if you're not using them directly, um, the user entity itself references them. So you still need to include those. Um, and then in the presence controller, I've just created this get active user here. Um, so we want to just have the context and the payload. So we, 
we can just pass in an ID uh, to, to be able to determine that. So we just use the shared service to acknowledge that message. Um, and then this is where we're using the get active user uh, method from the present service. So in the present service here, um, this get active user method here, it's just accessing the cache. Um, so recall that this is the Redis cache service, just made a small tweak in uh, renaming it. And instead of using it from other, um, you know, in the server itself, we're using it from the shared library, which has its server. So we can access it in both locations here. Um, and then, yeah, we return the active user. Um, so what is an active user? Uh, I think we've seen this before, but it's just um, the user, if their ID and whether or not they're active. So we saw that before. Um, so, oh, one thing to mention is in the chat module, we had to set up another microservice. So um, we just had to add in these things here. So pull the um, we create the chat module, we give it the config and shared service. I just copied in this from the um, one of the other modules for the most part. Uh, the only real difference is after, you know, we've got the queue, we need to add this here into as an environment variable. Um, same way as before, connect the microservice, start the microservice. Um, and the real difference here is we're just listing on port 7000. So this is going to be on a different server because we're dealing with microservices here, remember? So the presence is on port 6,000, I think. And then the chat is on port uh, 7,000. So we're, these are both hybrid microservices, which means we're gonna connect to them both uh, from the front end, and it's quite trivial to do. Um, but it's important to note that they do have different ports here. Um, so let's go back to our chat module. So this is just the beginnings of a chat module. Again, I use the Nest CLI to generate that with the Nest, um, I think it's Nest Generate App Chat or something like that. Um, so we just add in the chat service and then we want the chat gateway. So the same way we had a presence gateway, we're gonna have a chat gateway. Um, and then we're just going to wanna to provide the conversations repository interface, uh, which is the conversations repository and this likewise with the messages stuff. Um, and then we want the Postgres database module. Um, and then we want to access the auth service as well. And the present service as well. And then we're going to need type ORM. So that's going to have the user entity, the friend request entity. Uh, actually, I don't know if it needs the friend request entity because I think I just copied that over. Um, yeah, probably it doesn't. Um, but I'll get back to that. Um, and yeah, the Redis module. So we have this new message DTO. So from the React Native application, we want to send to the backend a object which has the message, uh, the conversation ID and the friend ID. Um, so we can come to our chat service here. So as you can see, it's just the boilerplate get hello chat service. And then in the constructor, we just wanna add in those things. So we get the uh, conversations repo, we inject that in there, we inject the messages repo, uh, we inject the auth service so we can access that. And then what we do is we start um, creating some of the methods here so we have a private method here to get the user uh, because we're gonna use this in other, um, as like a helper, but within this class. Um, so basically we have this observable. So we access the auth service. We make a network request to that microservice. Um, and we're expecting to get a user back based on the ID because we're just gonna need that. Um, so yeah, we just, I don't know why I've chosen to do this first value from observable. This isn't something I normally do. 
I think I was just wanting to illustrate a way and I ended up copying this pattern. Um, but nevertheless, um, and then you just return the user. So that's really simple. It's just, um, we want the user ID, but we want the user ID in the chat service. So we just make a call to the auth microservice and then the auth microservice already has a method to do that. Um, so that way we can get it within this area here. Um, so then we can get the conversations. So all of the conversations um, essentially, well, first we need to create the conversations. Um, so let's create those and we'll come back to that. So when we create a conversation, we're creating a conversation in this case between two people. Um, so we can just pass in the user ID and the friend ID, and then we can use the helper method we created to get the user. Um, and then that way we have the actual user entity itself. Um, and then we can create a conversation if they're defined um, by using the find conversation uh, method we created. So we created that on the repository. Um, so that's a custom method. Um, essentially, just by passing the user ID and the friend ID, we can find that. So because it could be the case that the conversation already exists. So if it already exists, we just don't want to do anything. But if it doesn't exist, um, we can just, you know, save that with those um, users there. So now we can create a conversation. Um, let's just get a bit more space here. Um, we can get the conversations. So we can just find with relations, um, which means because we have a relation, we wouldn't get that back normally because there's a bit of a join between the tables there. But if we add in this object with the relations of the users, we'll be able to get that user information back because we need that here. Um, because this will give us all the conversations. Um, and this probably isn't the best query. Um, but again, I didn't want to spend too much time optimizing query. Um, oh, that's something to do in production. So I just, you know, because that query was kind of hard, um, as you saw. Um, I mean, I think it just could be easier if I just spent more time looking at it. Um, but, you know. I'm just filtering based on all the results and then um, like for the user um, and then for all of the users in the conversations, um, I'm just giving back the user IDs here. So if the user IDs include, because, okay, so every conversation, it's going to, um, you know, it's going to have two users or it's going to have more than one user. It's going to have an array of users. And then for those array of users, if the user ID is in the array of the conversation is the same, then that's the user ID. Uh, then that's a user conversation that the user is actually in. Again, you'd probably want to do a better SQL query here or something like that. Probably just writing a raw SQL query would have been easier here. Um, I'm just sticking with the type ORM theme. I just did it like this here. Um, so return user conversations map. Um, we're just looping through and adapting this data here. And we're just returning the user IDs here. Um, and we do that just by mapping the users and because the users are that user entity object, we only want the array of IDs back. So we just map that back there like that. Um, so then I've got this async create message function. So we've created the conversation. We're able to get the conversations. Um, basically we use this get user again to get the user. Um, and then we can use the conversations repository to find the conversation um, based on our user ID and um, the new message we get. 
um, because what's happening is like someone's typing in a message. It's going to hit our gateway. It's going to call this create message function. That new message will have uh, the friend's ID attached to the message. So the person who created the message, their ID will be attached to the message. Um, so basically, if there's no conversation, um, well, we can't send a message. Um, obviously, this is just a safety. This wouldn't actually be happening. Um, it's just to make sure the code uh, here doesn't have any squiggly lines. Um, this message is repository and we can just save the message. So they sent the message to us from that new message, which has the message text associated with it. We save that into the messages repository or the uh, database. Um, and then we can have the user um, there as well and the conversation. So the message needs to, um, you know, whoever created the message, um, the ID of the person who created the message needs to be saved. Um, the message itself needs to be saved. Uh, and the conversation that the message pertains to needs to be all referenced together. Okay, so then we just come to the chat gateway. So we've got this WebSocket gateway here. And the chat gateway implements uh, on gateway connection and on gateway disconnect. Um, so we just add in our dependencies. So we add in the auth service here, uh, the present service here, uh, the Redis cache, and also the chat service, which we just went through all those methods there. Uh, then we have the WebSocket server and handle disconnect. Now we're just console logging that there for now. And I've just attached this dot .convo because we've got another um, fiber microservice on a different port that says handle disconnect. So not to get those confused. Um, and then handle connection. So there's a bit of work going on here. Again, like the presence uh, handle connection, we're getting the JWT and all that sort of stuff. And probably we could refactor that. Um, but I just copied and pasted that code there. Um, so I'll leave that as an exercise to the viewer. Again, I'm just trying to I'm cover I'm trying to cover more ground rather than um, treat it like an enterprise project where everything's super clean and tight. Um, mainly because I'm trying to you know do different features and stuff like that. Um, and I've already covered the main concepts in previous videos, perhaps not in this series, but in other series on my channel. So it's just a matter of spending more time um, doing that if you want to make it super clean and all that sort of stuff. Um, but again, you know, if you're watching this series and you made it this far in, um, chances are you're a pretty good developer. Uh, so, you know, that basic stuff should be able to, you know, error handling, all that sort of stuff. You do an introductory nest course should be pretty trivial to do. Um, so yeah, we just get the JSON web token from the authorizations header. If it's not there, we disconnect. Otherwise we get the response. Um, and you know, from the decoded cho um, token, um, if it's something goes wrong, it's not there, we just disconnect. Um, Otherwise, you know, we get the user and then we attach the user to the socket data, which means we can access the socket in other methods, uh, the user from the socket. Um, and then we have these me three methods here. So we'll implement these in just a sec, um, but just as a high level overview, when we log in, we want to set the conversation user, which means we want to put in the Redis cache, um, no, this is different to the active state. So in the presence um, gateway, we can track whether they're logged in or not. Um, this is similar, but a little bit simplified in the sense that, you know, when you open up your conversations or you go to the conversation page, um, it will save your user detail, well, just the user ID and the socket ID. Um, ID. Because this 
socket or this web socket or this server that we're on is a different server to the other one. So we need to send it to the right socket ID. Um, so we need to have that in the cache. Um, then we create the conversations. So the way I've got it here is basically based on your friends. If your friends, it just goes through your friends list and it creates a conversation for each one of them. But if they already exist, then it won't recreate it. So if I log in, create my conversations, the first time if you have a lot of friends, it might take a little bit. Um, again, this application doesn't, wasn't meant to um, be, you know, have that in detailed um, user friend request sort of thing going there. So I just needed a way to be able to create the conversations. Obviously, there's way more optimal ways of doing that. Um, but it's still okay, like based on your friends, it creates the conversations. Um, and if your friend logs in and the conversation's already created, it won't recreate it because it's already created. So I'll have that check there. Um, so optimizations up to the viewer. Uh, and then you get the conversation. So it's one thing to create the conversations and then you just need to get the conversations and getting the conversations. Um, I think you could make this an API call. Um, but once you're sort of in the gateway, you're doing all the stuff in the gateway, you're connecting to a gateway from the front end, it's not really a big deal just to have a API method um, there, just mainly because it's already, you've already imported all the libraries and you've already done all the injection and you've got all the helper methods in here. So, um, you know, it's just convenient. Um, and then... Let's go through some of these. So let's have a look at this create conversations um, method here. So this takes the user ID um, and then we wanna get the friends list and we'll be able to get the friends. And then for each of the friends, we want to go to the chat service and create a conversation here. And we saw that before. Um, we can set the conversation user. So this is pretty trivial. Um, we're just getting the user from the socket connection, which we set on handle. And then we can just attach um, or make an object with the user ID and the socket ID, set that in our Redis cache. Um, that way we can, you know, um, emit that to each one of our Um, friends or ourself I think actually um, and then get conversations so get conversations again strictly doesn't need to be a socket thing um, but we're just essentially getting the conversations based on the user ID um, and then we emit that back to the user uh, so could that be an API call well yeah uh, does it really matter? Not really. Um, yeah, so essentially that's, what did I just do? Oh, okay, so there's one more method here uh, and that's sending a message. So from the front end, if they are connected and they send something to the message, uh, we want to be able to handle that uh, handle message. Um, so they're going to give us that new message, which we've seen. We created the DTO for that earlier. We just extract the user from the socket connection. Uh, and then we create the message uh, from the chat service. Um, and then we communicate with the presence microservice. And we want to get the active user, which if they're active, which is in the cache of the other microservice, um, then, well, if they're not, we don't really need to send them the message. Um, but if they are online, if the other person in the conversation is online, they have a WebSocket connection. So we can get the conversation uh, friend ID from the cache. Um, and then based on that, we can just 
you know, extract a few values here. And then from to the friends socket ID, we can emit the new message that got created. And that's how you send the message from one person to another. So um, that's pretty much everything on the back end side of things. So let's have a look at the front end. So basically, where are we here? We've got this chat folder here. We've got these two models here. We've got an index page here. Um, and then we had a bit of context um, that we've set up before. So we know where everything is. There's only six file changes here. Um, so basically, we create the message. A message, it's got ID as an optional parameter because when we send it to the um, server, we don't know what the ID is yet, but we still want to use the message um, interface here, um, which has the message creator ID and conversation ID. Um, so that could be accessed on the back end. Uh, and then conversation. Now, this conversation object uh, or type, or whatever, is a little bit different to the back end. And that's because you don't really need all the stuff on the back end, oh, on the front end. All you need to know is what the ID is and the users in there. Um, and that's what we, I think we adapt it and give it like that on the back end uh, as well. Um, so probably we could just have you know, more consistent typing and stuff like that. Um, not a big deal. I made this one tweak to input though. Basically, um, I just added this here, mode equals flat by default um, and outlined. And that's just to do with how the input field looks um, because I needed to make it look more like the Facebook stuff with the uh, pill looking one. So basically, if the mode's outlined, we give it some border radius and that light gray color. Um, if it's flat, um, we give it a background color of, oh, we give it a, yeah, the color, background color of white. Um, otherwise, we give it a light gray because in some areas like input field or something like that, like the login stuff, we want those to have different colors than the, um, the text box uh, in the chat. So friends context, this is pretty similar to before. I think I just made one small tweak here. I think it's this logic here where you get the updated friends um, and then you just find the particular friend bio ID. Um, if there's no active friend, you return the previous friends. Um, otherwise you have this sort of mutation here um, where the active friend um, is active, you set that equal to is friend active. Um, and then most of the work's happening in the chat screen. So we started working on that. So let's have a quick look at things. So we just got a header at the moment, basically. Um, and then we just got this like hard coded image. Um, oh, actually that's a, well, semi hard coded image and I coded text here. So we just wanted to add stuff to this. Um, so this is the chat screen, by the way. This is um, in chat, the main screen here. So, okay, let's have a look here. So basically what I've done here is we needed a place to write the text, um, which is an input field. And I just got this input container here. Um, and then I just, I don't know why I didn't do this in the one area, but I've got some margin horizontal and margin bottom here. So you can have a quick look at these classes. We can just copy it from the code uh, on GitHub. But if you are following along with this, you know, you've got the chat container, the input container, um, and this other styling here. Um, so yeah, I've got this input field, which I've made outline type of message. Uh, and then I've sort of 
need to create this state with the text. Um, and then there's the button to actually send it, which is the send uh, icon. Um, you know, has this on press method here, a little bit of styling related things there. Um, and the actual logic here, this could be in another function, but I've just put it here. Basically, if there's no user details, which we get from context or there's no text, which we're going to have in state, uh, we just return. Otherwise we can create a message. So the, whatever's in the input field will be the message. Um, the user details, which we get from uh, the auth context will be the creator ID. And we can just pass in the conversation ID, um, which will have that logic up above. And then we'll be able to set the messages. Um, so the messages is going to be an array of messages and we're going to have some of the previous messages here. So we just take all those and then we just tack on the new message here. And then we can, um, we haven't created this just yet, but if you've seen the previous video on the present stuff, it's very similar. We're going to set up in the exact same way. Um, so you can just imagine we created the socket instance and then we can emit the send message. Uh, to the back end with that um, with this sort of object here. And then we just set the text back to blank. Um, then we have you know container here with just some flex direction as a row. Uh, we have an icon. this is the header in the header. Um, so we just have a core button and a video button here, uh, which is to do. And then we have our actual, the, the scroll view. This is where all of our messages are. This is the interesting part. Um, so basically we're going to go through all of our messages and for each message, we're just going to have some styling there. So they always have this styles message styling, which we just saw before. Um, but if the message, if the creator ID is equal to the logged in user's ID, um, we show the user message, which is gray. And otherwise we show the friend message, which is blue and to the right. Um, so we can just have this text here with that color there. Uh, and that color of the text is just going to be black or white. Um, so yeah, we get the auth context here. JWT and the user details. We get the chat ID from the params. Um, we have this navigate function here. Um, text and set text. That's what's in our text uh, that we message that we're about to send. Um, then we have the messages. Um, so we have an empty array of messages. Now we actually aren't getting the previous messages, so we'll probably set that up in the next video. Um, basically. There's been a little bit of code in this video, um, so I needed some way to split them up. Um, and also, there's no, um, yeah, so the, the, the previous messages, that's not implemented just yet, but we need to, deter, like, we've got online presence set up, and if they're online, we're going to send the, emit the message to the friend. Um, but if they're not on the line, we probably we want something like a push notification or something like that. Um, and to be able to set that up, we're probably going to need to clean up the code a little bit, do a little bit of refactoring, um, organize a little bit differently. Um, so I might just chuck that previous stuff, previous messages in that. Um, well, let me know, guys. Like... Um, like, do you need more detail or would you rather cover more ground? Because I could go into the video cores, for example, um, instead or first or something like that. So, um, yeah, it doesn't really bother me. I'll, I'll, but, yeah, they're the two main things left is, um, well, potentially uh, push notifications if people want that. Um, and also video calls. Um, so yeah, let me know guys. Um, so I just got a bit of state for the messages. 
um, and the conversations here. And then to get the conversation ID, we just go through the conversations and for every conversation, um, if the user IDs, if it includes the chat ID. So this chat ID is sort of not named very nicely. That's sort of the friend ID. Um, and if the conversation has the friend ID in it, so the conversation you're in, from all of the conversations you're in, if the conversation has the friend ID in that friend's chat, then that's the right chat. So that's the right conversation. So we can just get that ID from that conversation. Um, and then we can get the conversation messages because recall we're getting all of the messages, right? Um, so we just need to filter those and just get the, um, because we need all the messages when we click on a different one, but different chat room, for example, or different friend that we're talking to. So we need all that information, but we just display the one that we're in. So if the message conversation ID is equal to the conversation ID, um, well, then you're in the right area. So they're the conversation messages. Um, and then this is just setting up the WebSocket stuff. So we've seen this before. Uh, I've just got the conversation-based URL, port 7000, this Android thing here. Um, and then I'm just using use memo and I'm using the socket IO client based on the base URL with the authorization JWT attached. So when we, we that means we'll be able to use um, like this. So all well, this, I should say. Um, so we've got this use effect here. Um, essentially, what we've got here is if the conversation's length is greater than zero, uh, we don't need to get the conversations because we're, I did it the WebSocket way, but it's probably better in an API way, but I, don't know, I was already doing WebSocket stuff. So I just set it up like this. Um, so essentially we want to listen. Um, now I, I comment this out here because I was doing it like this, but then recall in Nest.js that um, we're getting the conversations on handle when we handle the login. Oh, sorry, not handle the login, on, when we handle the connection. Um, but we are got this, we are listening um, from the server for this get all conversations event. Um, so when that happens, we can set our conversations um, and then we can also just turn it off to avoid any memory leaks. Um, similarly, we're listening for new messages. Um, because, you know, we're not always the one writing the message. It's one of the friends could be writing a message. If one of the friends write a message, they can use our server, our gateway we set up, our chat gateway. Um, and, you know, emit event there. And then that will be processed. The message will be saved to the database. And then the server will emit a message back to the friend's socket ID. So we need to listen for that. Um, and then we can set our messages by just tacking on a new message there. And then we just have this conversation socket off here. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it guys. Uh, I think I just, um, probably just need to just check everything's still working. All right. Um, so Oh, I don't know if I'm still connected now. Uh, let's just type in something like that. Yeah, I didn't think it would be. Um, probably need to actually log out and all that sort of stuff. Uh, actually, let's just see if this works. So, because I made some changes to the code and stuff like that. Probably I should restart the server. Oh no, that's okay. So we got a hi, hello. Uh, okay, so that's all well and good. I did a lot of changes to the code and all that sort of stuff, but it still seems to be uh, working nice on upon a refresh. Um, so yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys, and let me know what you want to see next. Um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.